several passages in the canon where the Buddha said the main thing to keep in mind if you suddenly find yourself approaching death is not to worry. Now, this doesn't mean don't worry about the state of your mind or don't worry everything is going to be okay. He's not saying, don't worry, be happy. He's basically saying, don't worry, be focused, stay still. Because the mind is going to grab at things if it hasn't been trained. And if you've been responsible for various things in your life, you suddenly realize you can't be responsible for them anymore. If you're attached to certain things, you realize you have to let go. And for the untrained mind, that's very difficult. You're going to flail around, trying to grab onto things that you can't grab onto anymore, and to weigh yourself down with concerns about things you cannot be responsible for anymore, which is why you have to practice ahead of time. As John Fung used to say, when you meditate, you're actually practicing how to die. You drop all your other concerns and you focus on the state of your mind. While you have a breath to focus on, you focus on the breath as a place to gather the mind. And then you try to make sure that it doesn't go sticking its arms or heads out like a turtle. The turtle's in its shell. There's a fox outside the turtle. And the turtle knows that if it sticks its head out or its tail or any of its legs, the fox is going to get it. So it has to stay inside its shell. And this is a skill you have to practice, because it's so easy as you tell yourself you're going to stay with the breath that other members of the Minds Committee have other ideas. Here you've got a whole hour. You could think about all kinds of things. And as soon as you're Mindfulness lapses, or your alertness lapses, there they go. And you find that the reason the mind goes is, comes down to two sorts of reasons. One is misunderstanding, and two is something's wrong with your energy. Now, if it's a case of misunderstanding, when the mind tells itself it would really rather think about this, or you've got to think about this, or whatever, you have to learn how to reason with it, to tell it, no, this is not the time for that. And no matter how compelling the worry may be, you have to learn how to say, no, 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 we can't go there. One of the best arguments is to remind yourself that when you're worried about how things could get really bad, you don't really know exactly how they're going to get bad. But you do know that you're going to need mindfulness and you're going to need alertness and concentration and discernment to deal with whatever the situation is. Now, where are you going to get those things? You can get them only by practicing. This is what you're doing right now. Here is your opportunity to practice. So this is the best way to pre prepare for anything that's going to be difficult. That's one example. You'll have to find in your own case what the best arguments are for all your different defilements. This is what a lot of what discernment is about. Sometimes people think that discernment is simply learning how to not to think at all. You just watch arising and passing away and just let it arise and pass away and that's it. But as long as there are any bits and pieces of misunderstanding around this in the mind, the mind's going to have its surreptitious ways of sneaking out again. So you have to look and see where the mind still has some ideas that would compel it to want to go after, say, sensual thinking or worries about this, worries about that, and learn how to cut it short. Try to find somewhere to go straight for the jugular.
the more you can find the heart of whatever the misunderstanding is. Go straight for that, because you're trying to kill off your misunderstandings as quickly as possible, so you can get back to work as quickly as possible. That's how you deal with the distractions that come from misunderstanding. The ones that come from an imbalance in your energy, you have to deal with by trying to bring the energy back into balance. Sometimes it's a physical energy. When the body is all wired, the mind is bouncing around like a ping pong ball. You've got to find some place in the body where the energy is still. It's there. The body has many layers of energy, many different types of energy. And you want to look for the counteracting energy. Where is there a sense of stillness inside? It might be in your bones. Your bones are very still. They're not wired. So think about your bones, how they just sit there and they're heavy. And try to breathe in a way that allows you to get that sense of heaviness, solidity, to anchor you. And you focus as much as possible on that. There are other times when the distractions are more due to a low level of energy. And this way you've got to find some source of energy inside you. To counteract that. Because a lot of the distractions come because you're just too weak to keep things in mind. You've been working hard all day, the mind feels weak, the body feels weak, and things are just wandering all over the place with no specific purpose. It's not that you feel a real need to think about these other things, it's just that your energy is so low that whatever comes popping up through the nervous system just comes popping into the mind and you don't have any defense against it. So you've got to find where your strength is. John Lee talks about the energy that comes up the back of the spine. You might want to focus on that for a while. Or just make up your mind. You're going to focus on one little point in the body and just really stay right there and try to develop that quality of awareness that we talked about the other day, which is like listening very intently for things that are very subtle. You don't hold anything back. You focus right in and stay right in, 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 in. That way you gather whatever little energy you have. Then give it a little charge. As you bring it together, the different types of energy can begin to nourish one another. This is especially important when you find that the body is weak. When you're working with the breath and the body is healthy, you find that there are different sources of energy in different parts of the body you can draw on. And John Lee also talks about being sensitive to outside energies. Different places have different kinds of energy. Some places where you meditate, the energy is healthy. And helpful. In other places, it's not so helpful. So you have to learn how to tune in to the level of energy that's actually going to help you. Sometimes it comes from outside the body. But there will come points, even before you die, there are times when you're really sick and there doesn't seem to be anything in the body that gives you any source of energy. And that's where you've got to depend on the mind. There's five kinds of strength that the Buddha enumerated. There's conviction, persistence, mindfulness, concentration, discernment. You've got to find your energy here. And part of this, again, has to do with your understanding. Understanding that your actions matter. That's what conviction is all about. And that can make a difference. But there are some areas where they can't make a difference. In other words, this is where you have to drop the other worries you might have. 
the Buddha lists three things that someone might be worried about as they're approaching death. One is worried about their, their children and their family. The other, they might be worried about their parents. Or they might be concerned about the pleasures they're going to have to leave. You know, they, here we are in the human realm with all of its human pleasures. You start thinking about it and you won't sense this anymore. You won't see any beautiful sunsets. You won't see any beautiful natural scenery, the delicious food, all the other pleasures you can think of. You have to put them aside. And one of the ways you can deal with that is to realize that there are better pleasures on other levels of being up into the heavens. One sutta where the Buddha has the person who's counseling someone who's dying to say, well, there's better pleasures than that. And they get focused on one level of heaven. Well, there's a better pleasure than that. You get up to the Brahma worlds, and then you realize, well, even those Brahma pleasures, they're inconstant. They're not going to last. And if the mind is really ready, it's, it can actually let go at that point. And as for the things you might be worried about, you have to remind yourself that there comes a point where you have to let everything down. You can't carry the world around, or as they say in Thailand, you can't hold up the sky forever. And so if you see that those things are beyond you, you have to realize, okay, that's you did what you could. That's as all that's as far as you can get with that particular issue, that particular responsibility. Maybe someone else will pick it up. But even if they don't pick it up, you can't worry about it anymore. You've developed the perfections that come out of working at that task. And what's left is the dregs. As John Lee said, it's like squeezing fruit out of a juice. You've got the fruit, and you've got the juice out of it. And what's left after you've taken the juice is just dregs. The juice is the good quality of the mind that you developed. So you don't want to forget that. You want to hold on to that. And so whatever ex extent you are able to be mindful, to be alert, you just keep at it, keep at it, keep at it. Don't give up. Have that conviction that fires your persistence, that enables you to be mindful and alert. And it's that continuity of mindfulness and alertness that develops concentration. At the very least, you want to stay really focused. And when you can start making distinctions, the pain that's coming in, the sense of weakness, the sense of being overwhelmed, whatever, just see that as an object of the mind, but your awareness is something else. This is where discernment comes in. It starts seeing the distinctions. There's the awareness of the feeling, but then the feeling itself is something else. Stay with the awareness. This is a constant theme throughout the forest tradition. When John Mahabha was giving advice to the woman with cancer, that was one of the themes that was repeated over and over again. Learn how to see the distinction between your awareness and the pain. The talk we had from Ajahn Chah last night, again, the pain is one thing, the awareness is something else. Learn how to see that they really are distinct. And they're already distinct. It's simply that we, in our ignorance, glom them together. Now, this kind of discernment requires that you be really, really still to see these distinctions. The mind is running around. The distinction is going to be blurred. But when you're really still, you see that it actually does divide out that way, separate out that way. And the reason you didn't see it was because you were running past all the time. So that's the energy of the mind. It's a focusing in with that determination that you don't want to come back and suffer anymore. And anything that pulls you away from that determination, that distracts you from that determination, you've got to learn how to drop it. All the stories, all the narratives that you tell yourself about who you are and what your responsibilities are and what's going to happen in the world, what's going to happen to your family, your friends of all the projects that you take on, you have to have a spot in the mind where those things just don't matter.
or the quality of your mind does matter, the quality of your awareness does matter. So you've got to stay focused. You've got to learn how to develop this quality of staying focused. Not let yourself get distracted by whatever stories or narratives or sense of responsibility you may have. Or fear that you're going to miss out on something. The really important things are right in here. So as we meditate, we we're learning basically two things, the right way of understanding all this and then the right way of bringing our energy to bear. To develop this focus. When they talk about making the mind one, it's both a matter of the singleness of your focus and also your sense of priorities. This is the number one thing that you need to work on the number one thing of real value. I've always found it strange that people will say, well, there is no essence to the Buddha's teaching. The Buddha taught there is no such thing as essence. This comes from a modern academic prejudice against what they call essentialism. And they like to see the Buddha as a precursor. That the Buddha said, well, there's really no essence to you. Or there's no particular essence to his teachings. It keeps changing like an amoeba as it moves from place to place. The Buddha never taught that. He said there is one thing of essence. That's release. The mind that is totally free. That has true value. Essential value. So when you're making your mind one, it's both to bring it all together and to make that sense of release. It's one object. It's one priority. That's what this practice is all about. 